da 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 The leaving cert was cancelled. Which means daily videos for you guys. And today we have a super interesting video. I believe that this might help a lot of you when building your first computer in 2020 or finding out what CPU manufacturer you want to use. So just before we begin the video, I don't know what to say to you guys. You are absolutely incredible. You've brought the numbers up yet again. The number of people watching these videos that are currently subscribed is now up to 4.6%, which is incredible. We're almost up to 5%. So if you like this video and you're part of that 95.4% of people that aren't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. It only takes you a few seconds and it helps this channel out a lot. Ding my bell, join the 360p gang because that's what we have. No notification squad here. We're not a normal channel. Make sure to follow me on my social media, Twitter, Instagram, because that's where I'm taking suggestions from you guys. That's how we actually got VR Friday and VR Monday to exist. So if you're into VR, make sure to subscribe because those are the two days I'll be uploading VR content for you. Also, make sure to join our Discord server because there's constant discussion going on there and I'm constantly asking people what videos they want to see. So if you want to have a say, make sure to join down below. Let's get right into the video. So today's topic is really nice because... I believe that this is one of the first things we think of when we're building a brand new computer. And in the past, the answer was super simple. We went Intel. Now, throughout the years, things have changed over to AMD's side. Now, yet again, the floor is shifting. Now, I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but I've seen the prices on AMD processors go up. Which makes me wonder, are they still worth it? Let's find out. So I have my handy dandy razor blade here that still isn't broken somehow. So for these benchmarks, we're going to be using a website called User Benchmark. It's because I completely and utterly trust this website because here users submit their own benchmarks. And then the website takes the averages of all those benchmarks and throws them together. So on this website, we are getting real results. So first of all, let's compare the two processors that I believe you might want to start off with when building a computer. These are both pretty comparable. So let's just do that and see what shows up. So we are going to be comparing the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X. And I'm comparing the X because a lot of people are going to be going for the X, including myself, because we want that potential for overclocking. Now, basically what the X means on AMD is it means you're able to overclock your processor. It's unlocked. It is essentially the exact same thing that the K means on Intel. So if you're getting an Intel 9600K, you are getting an unlocked processor that you can later on overclock if you have that cooling capacity and bring your core speeds up. So we are going to be comparing the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X to the Intel i5 9600K because that is the equivalent of that processor. Now, as you can see on these charts, the Intel processor is about 10% stronger. And that is to be expected because that is roughly the way it's been throughout the years. But that's not the point because we're here for that price to performance ratio. And if you look at the prices, even though the AMD processors went up in price, you can still get them for a much better price than you can get the Intel processors. So if you look at the AMD processor, it's about 178 pounds. And this is on Amazon. So you know that these numbers are going to be correct and this is for a brand new processor. I imagine if you were getting them used, you can get them both even cheaper. And then you look at the Intel processor. It's about 210 pounds. That's about a 30 pound difference there. It isn't that much money, of course, but is it truly worth your 10%? Guys, I think we need to kill the birds. The birds are making way too much noise. So the mug is here. Of course, guys, the mug is a meme. Oh yeah. Basically what's going to happen is we're going to be going off the benchmarks here. If you look here, the AMD processor might actually be that 10% slower, but it actually has six cores and 12 threads instead of only having six cores and six threads. It also is clocked at 3.8 gigahertz out of the box. Now, please remember that this is the X model and you could probably take it really far by overclocking it. It is also newer than the Intel processor. It was released Q3 of 2019 compared to the Intel processor at Q4 of 2018. So there's quite a few advantages there to the AMD processor. Now, do keep in mind that the system I am currently running has an AMD Ryzen 5 2600X because I was one of those people that bought their new processor a month before the third generation was released. Yay. Now, I do actually know how the third generation works 
and that it works well because both my brother and multiple of my friends got the third generation. So if we once again look at the numbers here, they do all show about 10% of a difference. Gaming 87 versus 96, desktop 89 versus 96, workstation 81 versus 80. So the workstation part, as you can see there, isn't really that much of a difference. And I bet you could actually get that performance back by overclocking it. I really think we're going to need to kill those birds. Um, okay, the birds are dead now. Let's also keep in mind that these AMD processors don't actually have built-in graphics. So that's a thing going for Intel. Most Intel processors actually do have built-in graphics, while AMD has started moving away from that trend, focusing all their power on their processors. I personally think this is a good thing because it means you're getting more processor, but this is something that you should keep in mind because if you're not buying an A-series processor that is an APU, you will have to buy a graphics card with it or else your system will just not power on. And then of course on the other side, you could buy Oh, Gimbal died. while if you go Intel, you won't have to buy that graphics card. But these two, as you can see, are two that I would call budget options because they are under that 300 mark threshold. How about we actually go and we compare two processors that are of the higher end. Now, this website will be down in the description below in case you guys want to do your research on this website as well, because this is the website that I use to do my own research. So I think I'm starting to see a trend here. Here are two more processors that are of the higher end. So we have the Intel 9700K and the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. So these are two processors that you'd kind of go for if you wanted to just completely destroy your system. Of course, Intel now released 10th gen, so we're going to take a look at that in just a sec. As you can see here, I'm seeing a trend of plus 9%. So you're getting about plus 9% of the core i7 9700K compared to the 3700X. But again, if we look at the cores and threads, the AMD processor has eight cores and 16 threads, and it's they're both clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, but the AMD processor is once again newer, which makes me think it might have more overclocking potential. So you could potentially gain all this power back. So now let's compare the 3700X, because I believe that is AMD's highest end processor to the i7, but at 10th gen. So once we compare that, we can see that it's cheaper than the 9th gen. So as you can see, you're getting about plus 14% there. So it's an extra 5% compared to 9th gen. Now I'm comparing consumer processors here. I'm not even gonna go into Threadgripper because Threadgripper and Epic processors could probably destroy Intel's Xeon lineup. But as you can see here, the Intel processor is actually newer. So I'm wondering AMD releasing their fourth gen maybe this year could probably take back over Intel. And again, we're talking price to performance ratio here. Most AMD processors are going to be very cheap, but if you buy the X model, you'll be able to overclock it. Now, again, you will need to buy a graphics card with them, but I'm guessing that if you're doing gaming, you're buying a graphics card anyway. Also, stay tuned for the AMD versus NVIDIA video, which will be coming very soon. While Intel costs more and comes with higher results straight out of the box, I believe you could match those results if you were to overclock the AMD processor. Now, of course, you could be thinking, you could overclock the Intel processor again after that and probably take over. Well, I personally don't think so. Because the AMD processors are newer, I think that they would probably have a higher potential at overclocking. And I know for a fact that AMD overclocks can be extremely, extremely stable. I'm actually running an overclock here right now. As you can see, I am using it, so it's running completely stable. In case you're wondering what graphics card I have paired with my processor, I have paired the AMD RX 5700 XT. So going back to the question, is AMD still relevant in 2020? Now, considering that I'm pretty sure they're planning on releasing their fourth generation this year, I could be wrong on that, but they released their third generation last year. So according to me, they should release something this year. I'm gonna say yes. And that's because I personally wouldn't switch back to Intel. All the security flaws that came out with Intel recently really made me turn away. And also the performance gain that I get from overclocking, I personally don't see a need to pay more to get less. Now in the future, Intel might come out with something amazing and I will go back to them. But for now, I'm gonna stick AMD. Again, the most important part here is the price to performance ratio. If you're gonna be getting an AIO, you can probably overclock, get that X series processor, save yourself some money on the processor, get yourself an AIO with that, 
and then overclock it. And boom, you have an AIO and a processor that matches Intel standards. Which processor is right for you? Tell me down in the comments section below. If you guys liked the video and you're part of that 95.4% of people that aren't subscribed yet, make sure to smash that subscribe button with your forehead, ding that bell, join the 360p gang, follow me on my social media here and here. I want to hear what you guys have to say and what videos you want to see. That's pretty much the most important part for me. Again, the leaving cert is cancelled, so I'm uploading content every day for you guys. We're doing VR Fridays and VR Mondays, and every other day I'm uploading tech content. So if that floats your boat, make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, and see you again in the next one. Peace.